have trials and tribulation. I've been built and I've been scorned. You know, soon my trials will be Oh, I want some Yes, I do. That I want some somewhere. I want some. Oh, Lord, my Lord. Oh, Lord, my Lord. I want somewhere. Yes, somewhere. To lay my head. Your wife came running to him one day. Sick so long, cause you're God and die. Job looked at the woman, then he looked at the sky. Lord, I want some. I really did. He even pulled up the lyrics. I can't even read it. I want that. I'm going to get that song. Y'all hear me? I'm going to get it in my spirit. Good morning. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. You missed a time on last night. Oh. No. That ain't good enough. Y'all hands ain't doing enough. For the work that was put in on last night. These young adults took it up a notch. Yes, they did. I tell you, they almost caused some of us to bust, some of y'all, to bust out of your girdles last night. <laughs> I was laughing so hard and bustles coming loose and everything. Us men, we just went on and un <laughs> we, just, we, just, we just took that, that, you know, that, that vest we had, just took all the buttons and loose. And made us just lay it. It was absolutely a gala last night. It wasn't a banquet. It was a gala. All of our sisters were absolutely stunning. But did y'all see OJ last night? Yeah. OJ said, y'all got me in that suit last night, but you ain't going to get it in me this morning. You paid so much for it, you should have worn it again this morning. But boy, like it's a tux, you don't go to sleep in it and wake up, you don't pay for it. But he looked absolutely handsome last night. Amen. All of you all look absolutely just wonderful. Men were handsome, had the bad beard. My queen looking like James Harden last night in his beard. Thick, thick stuff, got the little fro. I'm just jealous I can have any more to grow. But we just, we just, we just had a great, great time. And the greatest joy I had is when they said we were dismissed and I could leave and not fit. I didn't pick up a plate. I didn't clean nothing. I didn't put nothing. I was just taking pictures and cheesing all night. And I mean, all the way up to 2 o'clock in the morning, I was just getting texts. I was getting uh, pictures. And, and I was at Waffle House this morning getting my normal Sunday morning coffee. And the young lady at the grill, it's amazing who know you through Facebook. She said, Pastor, you were sharp last night. Girl, you don't know me. Well enough to be talking about how sharp. You don't even know me. Oh, yes, I do know you. You bad on social media. I said, she said, y'all Facebook page or whoever my friend is. I didn't ask her who it was. And she said, you were sharp. She said, but Sister Wally look better than you. And I said, she's supposed to, amen. She celebrated yesterday her 57th birthday. Amen. Amen. Let me, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all, she couldn't get nothing right yesterday, nothing. And the more she was getting frustrated with herself, I just said 57 looks good on you. 
That's all I said. She was already having a bad time. Rick, she was having a bad time. She couldn't find the shoe for the dress. The purse wasn't working out. She couldn't find the bracelet or anything. I was just cool at the other side of the pillow. But last year, I'd have been mad. But I'm intentional this year. I'm intentional this year. I, mean, I am waiting for her to say, I can't believe what I am experiencing. This is February. I'm going to wait about around May. I'm giving her to May. She don't say something, I'm going to say something. Because I'm ready. Making changes in your life is not an easy thing. Because there are some things about her I want to see change. And the only way it's going to happen, I got to. Okay, so I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I tell you, we get to Walgreens almost. We hit the curb to come on the commerce, and she said, oh, my goodness. I don't have to. You want me to turn around? I wouldn't have never said that last year. And she said, no. I said, hmm. I said, you sure? I pray it all the time. She didn't say yes. We had a great, great time. Did y'all see Alvin last night? Now, listen here. He was in a he was in a, a, a league all by himself last night. Now we called the colors. Okay, whatever that is. I think he found it. You know, um, okay, my, the new convert here. Uh, she texted me, Clarissa. You were just stunning last night. I don't mean no harm. You look better than your hood. I mean your friend that night. I said, my God, some of them people I did not know, they fixed up real good last night. Even Mike looked good last night. Had his hair twisted and going on. I'm going like, this is amazing. Y'all missed it. Those that didn't come, you missed it. And listen here. Some folks, Sister Hassel, well, this close from doing the stanky leg, <laughs> mashed potatoes. I almost got up. I really did when they started, honey, you my shining star. But I had to remember where I was. Amen. Amen. And so I was wondering last night with all of the older folk, they got on out of there. Didn't them older folk get on out of there? Yeah. And y'all young folk were still there in the music. Oh, wait a minute. Did y'all hear about the saxophone player? Hold on. Hold on. Hold, hold, hold on, young adults. Hold on, young adults. Young adults. Young adults. Hold on. My, my, my senior members, how was the saxophone player? Was he all right? Okay. Y y young adults, y'all pulled it off. That was the one I was sweating bullets over. I really, I really was sweating the bullets over. And then... And then, what's, what's that lady name? How'd y'all like that twist? Was that all right? That one thing. Was it, was it, was, was, was it worth the $50? All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. I, some things you just can't say on social media because stuff just get out y'all. Yeah, and I wish I, I'm going to have the brothers that give me a button to where I can, we can cut things off and turn it back on. And there's some things social media don't need to hear what Brother Wallace said because I've been shot off on something, you know, and, 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 and it'll, get, it'll go out wrong, you know, you know. Sean, I miss you last night. You were there? Oh, no wonder it was. No wonder it kept going over well. And then Michael Ward was there. Mike, Michael Ward was there last night. That's, that's uh, Tra Tracy Hood. I guess we kept him out so late last night, he getting his rest this morning. I tell you, it was good to have him. We had so many people. The young adults, y'all pulled it off. Amen. An outstanding job. Brother Powell thought he was sharp in that ugly gray hat he had on. Did y'all see him strutting last night? I told my wife he needed to sit his old gray self down. That hat. Now let me let me take that back. Boy, you were sharp in your hat last night. Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Sister, sister Arnold made you look real good with your hat on. Amen. But well, we had a time, the red hats. Now, I don't care for me wearing hats in building. I like women to wear hats. Last night, I made an exception. Y'all are wearing y'all hats. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. We're going to be talking about for a long time. Music and 
saxophones in the church. We were not in the church. We was in a building, though. And the church happened to meet, <laughs> meet over there. We just had a great, great time. Thank DJ. Now, they call Friday night's meal uh, catering from Terry's Grill House. That's the future restaurant of your preacher in a few years, in a few a year or so to come. And we want to thank DJ Sheree. And I was told, other than work with him, that DJ is a pretty tough taskmaster. And he even told his wife, you know, listen, I'm going to fire you because you ain't coming up to par. And she looked at him and said, you ain't got to fire me. I quit and took off. And I told my daughter, oh, that's how you handle it. Make it no. Let him talk to you because he, she probably working harder than him. But, but I got over there somewhere around 6 o'clock that morning. He was putting the shoulders on. And it brought back memories 30-some years ago. His mother and I get up early in the morning. Brother Smith, Brother Kim, all of us will be preparing to have great time. And that old building on Oak Grove and then the green building with Sister Wallace and Sister Craig and, and Sister uh, Early Wallace, Sister Craig and Sister White, my mother. All of those different ones back then, Sister Ward and all of them back in those days. Sister, at that time, Sister Branch, Sister Gill. Uh, uh, we, we did it back then. But look what the Lord has done. I said, look what the Lord has done. What an awesome God we, we serve. Now, we don't want you to run off. We're not going to hold you very long. But we don't want you to run off this morning. We got something very special that we want to do after the services, after we somewhat conclude. Brother Thomas Hardaway and Sister Arnice is with us this morning. They have guests with them this morning. We are certainly honored. But it was all 30... 30, 34, 35 years ago that Brother Hardaway, Brother W.C. Edwards, and Brother Warren Blakeney poured into the Western Grove family. And we are grateful that God has blessed him uh, to still, be, both of them, to still be on this time Saturday. And I asked him to say a word to us uh, and preach for us this morning, but he declined. Uh, 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 and I understand. I, I do. I do. I do understand, but I don't understand. But I will understand. But then Justin is here, and I cannot let him be here because I got to deal with y'all when Justin is gone. That you didn't let Justin do this, and you didn't let him do that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see what God works through this father and son duo. We don't, we don't know how God's going to do it. But we're so grateful that he's home to the last night. You were beside yourself. <laughs> you were so happy to be up. I ain't never seen somebody so happy to be up and be home. But I was impressed. Let me tell you why I was impressed. Because that young girl came from here. And she still loves God. She still loves the church. And, she, and she's uh, an intelligent young woman in Christ. Knows who, she's, who she is. And she was willing to come back home and be with the family that gave her the foundation. And we thank God not only for her, but for her parents as well. We just thank God for them. We had a marvelous, awesome, awesome, awesome time. Now listen here, let's get ready for uh, a, a year of intentional baptizing. I just believe somebody's ready today to put the Lord on in baptism. Listen, listen, as we are preparing for our worship this morning, uh, 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 keep the Aka Butler community and families in your prayers. Who would have thought that the small little town of Aka Butler, 300 in that community, that's what the records are saying, that six people's lives were taken. And it made world news almost overnight or same day. And so let's be praying for those families. But, you know, it's almost becoming like Dodge City, isn't it? I tell you, keep the Rouse family in your prayers. My, my cousin, Leon, uh, uh, he was seen for one moment and dead the next moment. That's how life is. Continue to keep our members here at the Grove. Brother Avery is here with us. He got a, he got a right arm you can't mess with. But you can, mess, you can mess with that left arm all you want. We thank you, Avery. Amen. My friend Calvin Malone, his wife Linda, let's keep them in our prayers. Sister Eva Janelle Bell, let's keep them in our prayers. Sister Wanda Hayes, let's keep uh, her in our prayers as well. If there are others, get them to me or get them to uh, our uh, media ministry, our brother Alvin, and we'll make those known as well. It was a great experience after I finished Sunday preaching there in Miami, going back to my room after being exhausted, but not too exhausted, to pull up on my page, and I seen Sebram Branch standing in my place. 
on last Sunday. Um, things were not working out. Every minister that I had already had in place called and said this, called and said that. And it just hit me in the spirit, uh, in my mind as well. I said, let me just go ahead on. And I knew he would be ready. And if he wasn't ready, he was going to prepare himself to be ready. And what an awesome job he did. Thank you, Stephen, for outstanding job. God bless you. <laughs> Believe it or not, there are some more younger men in this church can do that. Stand in the gap and, and be there as, as, as well. Come on now, let's stand together as, as we prepare our hearts and our minds to worship God together. I do not know what you came to do this morning, but I came to give God what he deserves. He's worthy of all of our praise. It was he that woke us up this morning, gave us the right conception of our minds, the right activities of our limbs. He was the one who, who gave us the ability to put one foot in front of the other and, and be able to go about and get our coffee this morning, our juice, whatever it was. And then get in our cars and drive ourselves down here. What an awesome, awesome God we, we serve. And he deserves all of the praise. David said something like this in the 100th Psalms. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a unto the Lord. All ye land. land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. People of God that agree, said amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, uh, uh, it's, intentional. it's intentional. Tell your neighbor, we are, we are better, better together. together. We are a team, are a team. With, no I with no I in it. In it. We, are we are better, better together. together. God has, God has delivered, us. delivered us. I will, I will. Praise, his holy name. praise his holy name. It will be. It shall be. It, shall. it must be, it must be. Intentional. intentional. Give God a great big hand clap of praise. All night. And it's all day. Lord, the angel wants you.
chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians, chapter 4, verse 13. And it reads as follows. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of his word. Amen. For so much that come, brother, coming, just coming. I want you to take this moment as we talk to God in prayer. All right. If you ever so thankful for all of your blessings good times and the bad times. But we won't dwell this morning on our bad times. We're going to take this morning to be thankful for the good times. 
I got one question for you. Are you thankful? Yes, sir. I said, are you thankful? Lord, I want to say bow our heads in prayer. Most kind and gracious Father in heaven, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father God, we come this morning, we come this morning with a, a prayer of thanks. Oh, Father, there are so many things that we need to thank you for this morning. Father, we thank you for watching over us last night as we slumber and slept. You allowed us to awaken this morning to breathe a breath of life and to see a new day. Oh, Father, we come this morning just thanking you for your mercy and your grace. Father, we thank you for, for just sparing us, sparing our lives. Oh, our life is so precious, Father. We thank you for every, we, we thank you for every moment. Father, we thank you for every second. We thank you for every minute. We thank you for every hour. Father, we thank you for every day. Lord, we just thank you so much for, for just being there for us. And Father, we come this morning, we, we come praying for those who are ill, especially those who are members of the household of faith. Oh, Father, we thank you for, we come praying for those who are, who are, who are very sick, who, who, who think there is no hope. But Father, we, we ask you to, to, to be with them this morning, to lift them up. And Father, to stop by the hospital this morning and, and, and be with the doctors. And be with them as they treat the various patients and all. And Father, when they've done all that they can do, you step in and you see it through, Father. We thank you. Oh, Father, we come this morning, we, we come this morning just, just praying for, for, for world peace. We pray that men will come together and solve their problems with words and not weapons. Father, we come this morning just, just thanking you for this, letting us be here in, 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 in this sin sick world and the things that we're dealing with, you know, mass shootings where people are just shooting people every day, 10, 12. 
Our Father, we have to deal with the racism, the cynicism, the mysticism. But for those who have doubt, we want to let you know this morning that there is a God, and he's still alive, and there is no doubt about it. And one day he's coming soon. Oh, I think this morning that the song that Brother Wallace sang all the time about the train. You know, there is a train of coming. If all we just have faith in it. And you know, when that train come, we don't have to have no ticket or no baggage. All we need is faith to get on board that train, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Oh, Father, we thank you for, we know that you not only are a good God, but you are a great God. Because not only do you hear our prayers, you answer them also. Oh, Father, we thank you for being a 24-7 God, a God who is there for us all the time. For you, you, you said that you would always be with us. You'll never lead us. And we know that you are, for you're always there, Father. You're there in the sickness and the pain. You're there in the storm and the rain. You're even there when it's a hurt and shame, but you're there, Father. And we thank you. Oh, Father, we just, we just come thanking you this morning for, for, for just being, giving us life and lifting us up and they, from, from the problems that we see day to day. Oh, Lord, I tell you, my heart is heavy this morning. I pray for, I pray for down the road, the people in Aka Butler, the mass shootings and all, you know. And, and, and I, but I pray, I pray that, that men will find a way to have a, something that can certainly solve the problems of the day. And that is we need more love in our heart, Father. And we thank you. Oh, Father, I, I pray a special prayer for our children also. You know, it is, it is so sad that our children go to school and can't learn for watching out, thinking that they're going to be shot. Uh, or there is someone with a gun or something. But, but Father, we just ask you this morning to, to build a hedge around our children. Be with them, Father. And we thank you, Father. And our Father, this morning, as I get ready to go to my seat, I just want to say that we love you, Father. We love you because you first love us. And Father, as we go through the remaining portion of service this morning, we pray that all of us this morning will lift our voices and sing and praise and show you that we truly are thankful for everything that you've done. This is our prayer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You know, I, I feel I can't think of what they call those children who can't be still. But I'm an adult this morning. Y'all can tag me like that this morning. I can hardly keep my seat. Uh, my brother, uh, 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 yeah, he's a friend of Brother Hardaway. And if he's a friend of Brother Hardaway, he's a friend of West Oak Road. And, and uh, when I see you, uh, brother, come on, come on, come on, come on up. Uh, come on up. You're going you to get in where you fit in. I feel in where you fit in. Come on up. We're going we to enjoy you as you enjoy us. And so, you get him going. I, I've just been in the spirit all last week. God gave us a great, great time there in Miami. I come home off the plane, get back here. Last night, y'all like to kill me and another good time. And then I come in this morning and y'all are ready to talk to God. Yeah. Not just through uh, the word, but through, through singing. So, so um, I want to do something. Now, I ain't going to be doing the same. I'm going to start it off. I'm going to start off. See him keep going. Yeah. And see him somewhere, he's gonna jump in here and he's gonna start his song. I might sit down. No, I may not sit down. I'm sorry. Cell phone. Mm -hmm. With 
No Facebook page right now. It's just you and the Lord. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing. I surrender, I surrender all to everything, everything. Lord, I give to you. What a blessing. this since I left California. <laughs> and I'm just glad to be here. I want to try to do just, a, I'm sick, y'all. I don't know why I call me a pimper, but I'm really sick. Uh, heaven on the other side. And I asked uh, my man that'll help me out if I fall down. Heaven is on the other side. 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 I can make it. I will make it. Heaven is on the other side. 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 The side heaven is on the other side. I can make it. I will make it. Help me out, sister. The other the side is heaven.
coming back. He gonna take us all home. He gonna take us to heaven while we're singing, shouting. No be no mind. There we go.
because you're going to say worship today was participatory. Yeah. <laughs> you really was in it. Now, Justin, I don't know what he's going to say, but this is what I'm going to give you.
mother's God. He's not my father's God. The reason why I believe is because I tried it for myself. And I found out that he'll be a way out of no way. He'll be a bridge over troubled water. He'll be a lawyer in the courtroom. He'll be a doctor in my city. Is there anybody here who can testify that I know him for myself? I know him for myself. Yeah. Yeah. And he's worthy to be praised. All I need to tell you this morning, as I bid you farewell, When you spend time with him, you know that he's here. But now if you ain't spend no time with him, that's why you can sit there like he ain't here. But at least if you're going to sit there and smile at somebody, amen. At least if you're going to sit there and look like you're happy to be in the presence of God. Last time I checked the old church, you said he walks with me. And he talks with me. He I ain't got to wait to do five acts on a Sunday morning to be in the presence of God. He walks with me every day. And when I'm about to lose my mind, he holds my mind in the palm of his hand. He holds my heart in the palm of his hand. So I stopped by to tell you, either way, I'm good. That's the title of the sermon. Either way, I'm good. Either way, I'm good. Either way, you're good. Because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens, who strengthens you. Let me read this one verse. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 11, thanks to the angel of this house, my father and my pastor. For those who are technical, he old enough to be a pastor in the, amen. Ain't getting no head no more, but it's all right. My daddy still look good. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter four, verse number 11. The Bible says, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I, I know how to live on nothing. And I know how to live with everything. Paul said, I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Whether it is with a full stomach or an empty belly. With plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ. Who strengthens me. You ought to look to somebody and tell them, either way, either way I'm, good. I'm good. Either way, either way 
I'm good. Someone has suggested that if you are a retailer, you really don't want to place too much emphasis on the Thanksgiving holiday. Beyond the colorful tables and beyond the turkey platters, beyond the greeting cards, there's not much merchandising to be done. After all, Thanksgiving is not about giving and receiving gifts. Thanksgiving is about being thankful for what you already have. And that is bad for corporate America. But listen, church, you don't have to be a retailer to feel that way. It seems that people in general avoid putting too much emphasis on gratitude. Like the retail industry, they fail, they fail to see how they can personally benefit from it. But I stopped by to tell you what's bad for corporate America is great for the soul. And so every now and then, you ought to stop looking at what you don't have. That's the problem with America now. That's the problem with society. Now we're looking at everybody else and what they have. But you ought to just be thankful for the little bit that you got. Because you serve a God who can multiply the little that you have. And it causes me to be content in whatever state I am. I ought to have a witness in here who can testify that I'm thankful for what I have. And whether I'm in the valley or on the mountaintop, I'll still give him praise because I've learned how to be content. I'm almost done. In the English language, there's a difference between complacent and contentment. Y'all got time for this? There's a difference between complacency and contentment. In the English language, these two words share similarities. Yet, yet one word presents a difference between the two. And that one word is awareness. <sighs> awareness. Complacency, beloved, is being satisfied with self to the point that one doesn't potential uh, danger or defect. While contentment is similar, it carries the idea of being satisfied, yet aware of possible dangers and defects and remaining balanced in your emotions, your mentality, and your spirituality. Lord have mercy. Contentment shows us that through the fluctuation of life, we are good either way. Complacent people don't want to move forward. They don't want to move backward. They just want to stay right where they are. But content people, matter of fact, complacent people complain the most because they ain't doing nothing. But people who have learned the secret of contentment, they know how to, listen, there's a difference. You are aware of your circumstances. One author said the trouble with him is that he's a thermometer and not a thermostat. This statement by one of the deacons aroused the pastor's curiosity. They were discussing possible board members and Jim's name came up. Pastor, it's like this, the deacon explained. A thermometer doesn't change anything around it. It just registers the temperature. It's always going up and down. But a thermostat hmm, regulates the surrounding areas and changes when they need to be changed. Jim is a thermometer. He lacks the power to change things. Instead, they change him. Listen, beloved, I need for you to know that you don't need to be a thermometer. You need to be a thermostat. And when you walk in the spirit of God, you can walk into the rooms and shift the atmosphere of the room because of your spirit. Is there anybody here who knows something about the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit? It'll cause you to walk into rooms and shift the mentality of people. Either way, I'm good. I'm done. I got two points. If you don't get your amen, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you're good either way. Because of God's overruling providence and his unfailing power. It's not deep, real simple, but it's good for your soul. The overruling providence of God, number one, causes us to be appreciative of his providential care. The word providence comes from two Latin words 
Pro meaning before and video meaning to see. Pro meaning before and video meaning to see. God's providence simply means that God sees to it beforehand. You are not here by accident. God saw to it beforehand for you to be sitting in that pew this morning. Not to see what everybody else is doing, but to receive something from him. Because your spirit is connected with his spirit. And God is wanting to pour something inside of you. And my prayer is this morning that you open your mind to receive what God has for you. Because it's by his providence that you are here. He sees to it beforehand. It is, the, it is the working of God in advance to arrange circumstances and situations for the fulfilling of his purpose. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 is clear. And we know. He didn't say we believe. He didn't say we have faith. He said and we know. I have this assurance that God causes everything to work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. The, the, the Greek word uh, in here means that this is a, we get our word synergy from. It means that God can take the good and the good and make it work for your good. God can take the good and the bad and make it work for your good. And if you like me, God can take the bad and the bad and flip the script and turn it out to work for your good. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach this morning. Is there anybody in the house this morning who can testify that I ain't always been right, I ain't always did the right thing, but I serve a God who's bigger than my pain, I serve a God who's bigger than my problem, and he can take the bad and the bad. Hold on, daddy, he sees to it before it. All right, number two, I got to go. I got to go. But do you remember Joseph? Joseph said, what you meant for evil, you sent me to prison, you put me in a pit, I ended up in slavery, Potiphar's crazy wife tried to catch me up, and then I made it to the palace. Why? Because God knew that you were going to need a savior. And I'm the one that has to save your life. Because my daddy is at home hungry and he needs some food. But the only way they could get some food, God had to shift some stuff so that his brothers would recognize. Oh, have mercy. So God can turn it to work. Sometimes we have limited sight because we don't walk by faith. I didn't think I would be in Atlanta at Camp Creek uh, when I was 13 and I was hooping in the shower and it felt good to me. I used to hear daddy moan on Sunday morning, right? You know, and I would go, I would get in the shower and I would play around with it until one day it got to feeling good. And a lot of people may ask me why I say, ain't he all right? Because when I was 13 years old, I was in the shower saying, ain't he all right? 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 And yeah, 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 yeah. But I didn't know where I would end up. But the but, but I'm glad that I have parents and I've learned for myself to walk by faith in spite of circumstances, in spite of what's going on. God has already fixed it. And listen, if I don't get it down here, I got another place. Paul said for me to live is Christ, for me to die is gain. Listen, and then causes us to appreciate God's unfailing power. Contentment is not caught. It's learned through life experiences. Twice in these verses, the word learned is mentioned. One word 
Emerson means to have arrived at a fact of understanding. The other word means to learn the secret and conveys the idea of secret knowledge being adhered to. It ain't enough for you to know about God and not try him. It ain't enough for you to be able to quote scripture, but you can't adhere to it. Paul uses another rare word, and I'm, I promise you I'm going to cut across the field, for the phrase to be content, which means self-sufficient or self-reliant. All right, so there's a little tension right here because he says I can do all things through Christ. But the word learn means that I'm self-sufficient. So how can I be self-sufficient and yet rely on the Lord? Paul is saying my self-sufficiency is due to the power of Christ. He came to grips with his circumstances and fared well in them because of Christ. But I need to help all of us church folk understand something this morning. There are some things that you can do by yourself. Because God has placed inside of you mental capacities. He's placed in you the capacity to feel. He's, he's placed in you the capacity to think. And we're not just on our knees praying for God to rain something out of the sky. When God says, I've given you the strength, I've given you the fortitude, I've given you the power, I've placed some stuff inside of you where you can do this on your own, but you cannot do it outside the scope of my power. We didn't get this far by ourselves. We are independently dependent. And then lastly, I got to go. I'm finna go eat. <laughs> Unfailing power. Know that you have his power. When you come to your wit's end, Contentment teaches you that you did not get this far by yourself. <laughs> your knowledge can only take you so far. Your information can only take you so far. Your academia can only take you so far. Your scholarship can only take you so far. You have to remember that you serve a God who formed the universe. I ain't got time to go there, but he formed all of this. And God, you, matter of fact, God is not bound by the limit of your understanding. Do you realize how big your God is? God is a big God, but here it is. Come here. He's so transcendent that I have to respect and revere him, but he's so eminent that he can deal with how I feel and push me through my Lord have mercy. So you didn't get this far by yourself. And it shows us that we are dependent on the deliverer. Though you're self-sufficient and self-reliant, you still need him. Paul knew how to get along well in life because of Christ. Paul knew how to remain calm in the inflation and fluctuation of the economy because of Christ. If I could put it in layman's terms, uh, uh, Paul knew how to be thankful and appreciative and operate when he had liver cheese and when he had prime rib. He, 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 he knew how to make it happen with some bologna and some crackers. With some hook cheese, that's some, yeah, amen, somebody. Uh, he, he knew how to be all right in either circumstance because of Christ. But this presents a crucial paradox. He was so strong when he was weak. He was independent only when he was dependent. He teaches us that you can't make it by yourself. Ah, uh, Paul, 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 yeah. Paul teaches us that our victory comes from a conscious dependent dependence on the Lord and his power. And I believe I have at least two people, as I bid you farewell, who can testify that the only reason you made it this far is because of the Lord. Because of the Lord, you've made it. 
a long way. Be, 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 because of the Lord, you, uh -huh, you're elevated to a new dimension. Because of the Lord, you haven't given up. And because of the Lord, you haven't given in. Because of the Lord, you haven't given out. Is there anybody here who can testify this morning that you made it this far because he's got all that you need. When times are hard, he's got all that you need. When times are tough, he's got all that you need. When times are rough, he's got all that you need. When things fall apart, he's got all that you need. When my money is funny and my change is strange, he's got all that you need. When love is lost and friends are gone, he's got all that you need. When the economy is declining and immorality is at an all-time high, he's got all that you need. When mother is gone, he's got all that you need. They hardly crucify him because he's got all that you need. They hung him high and stretched him wide because he's got all that you need. They pissed him in his side because he's got all that you need. Listen, he was buried in a barber tomb because he's got all that you need. He stayed there Friday night because he's got all that you need. He stayed there Saturday night because he's got all that you need. But right early Sunday morning, is there anybody here who can get happy that he rose on the third day? I don't need no money to make me happy. I don't need a car to make me happy. But when he got up on Sunday morning, that's why I praise him. I praise him. Because he's got all. He's got all. He's got all. He's got all. That you need. And because he's got all that you need, you good either way. So when they want to walk out your life, let them walk. You good either way. When friends and family turn into foes, you good either way. You know how to get along with much and you know how to get along with little. I thank God for my mother. Mama could take some flour and some, some milk and water and she could form some biscuits. And you know, it was just me, DJ, and Audra living in the house, but we had friends who liked to come over. And, and, and when we would have friends come over, my mother would take the rolling pin and she had to put it on the dough so she could, she had to stretch it a little bit. Is there anybody in the house this morning? know anything about stretching? Is there anybody in the house this morning that knows something about making more out of little so that you can bless them? I ought to have more witnesses in that this morning who can testify that I've only had a little, but God stretched it to make it. So you ought to come to Jesus this morning. You ought to come to him right now. Because he's got all that you need. You, you got a broken heart, he can mend your broken heart. I'm a witness, he can mend your broken heart. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if you're dealing with sickness, he, he's able to heal your body. If you lost someone, he's able. You ought to come to him right now. If you don't know him for the pardon of your sins, he's got all that you need. Well, preacher, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't right. And preacher, I ain't... I ain't, I ain't I ain't been the best person out here in these streets. That's all right. You sitting a bunch to you. You sitting next to a bunch of folks who have been out in them streets too. And the only reason we here is because we need the Lord to help us. Uh, the church is not for well people. It's for sick folks who's trying to get well. Is there anybody here who wants to get well? He's got all that you need. Won't you come to him this morning? Listen, faith coming by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. You cannot know about God without first hearing about him. So I struggle with atheists because you don't believe in God no more, but you heard him before. And the only way you can hear about God is through the word. 
And so here, the word is going to hear how Jesus died. You heard it. He was buried. Arose the third day. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God with all of your heart. At the foundation of Christianity is belief. If you're looking for an exhaustive and, 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 and comprehensive uh, 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 book, this ain't that book. If you're looking for astrology and all that, it, it, this ain't that book. This is the book that's going to get you to heaven. You do know that you got to die one day. And after this life, there is a judgment. And there is a heaven and hell. I, 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 listen, there is a heaven and hell. And you, you got to get your house in order. Amen. And I want to be where he is. Believe that Jesus is the son of God. Regardless of what everybody is saying, you, you have a choice to make. You make the choice to stand on your faith. And believe that Jesus is the son of God. Repent of your sins. And then confess him to be the son of God. Have all of your sins washed away in baptism. He gives you a brand new start. He gives you a clean slate. Come here. God has made it so easy for you to go to heaven that you really got to want to go to hell in order to go. Come here. Because when, when, when I'm sincere, in my heart and I mess up and I ask God to forgive me, he gives me another clean slate. Hold on. The Bible says that his mercies are new. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Who wouldn't want to be in a family like that? Come to him right now as together we stand as we sing. How did I make all these years Mm -hmm. How did I make it this far? Hey, hey, through the valleys and over the hills, yeah. it had to be God. How did I make it through the storm? You got time. You really Don't wait. Go. Come on now. Just Don't wait too late. Tomorrow is not promised. So All you have play. is right now. Don't let this moment pass you by. Don't let it pass you by to receive his grace. Don't let it pass you by to receive his mercy. Don't let this moment pass you by to get what you need from God. Don't let this moment pass you by. By the grace of God. There's another that needs to come. You need to make some changes this morning. Come on, give your life to Christ. Not tomorrow, right now. The only time you have is right now. Tomorrow is not promised. I preach, I don't know all I need to know. Just know that you need the Lord. And he's willing, he's able, and he's ready.
that you didn't know how you were going to make it out. But God made it happen for you. It was only by the grace. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. Could have been dead last week. But he helped me make it through it. Lord, I made it this far. By the grace. you I felt I felt like a, a brand new spring busting wide open. if your wood ain't if this didn't light your fire y'all know the drill your wood wet this is the kind of praise that stirs the heart and it moves the soul. For in times like these, we need something not only that we can hear and know, but because we know what we know, we can feel it. Because we know that God is real. And because he is real, I can feel him. Because everybody don't have my testimony. And because you don't have my testimony, you don't have my praise. And sometimes you look at people's praise and you'll say it don't take all that. But if you only knew that story. Because some people really don't look like what they've been through. Some people can make themselves look good in a bad situation. But they can make themselves look good because of what lives in them. And thank God today for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Oh, little did I know what God was doing in my home through myself and his daughter, my wife. Gives me great joy. But some people are visiting their children through bars. To be able to stand and watch his son talk about the God and to have another son who loves talking about God and to have a daughter and I can hear in my ears and go ahead, brother. Does my heart. I couldn't hardly hold it over there. I, uh, uh, it got down in my soul. It got down in my soul. And I see Sebram standing tall, and Rakeem, and all these young folks holding on. My young sisters holding on. Y'all, excuse me, but somebody have to hold my knee. Sister Irene sitting there trying to quiet that baby. I was saying to myself, that's my future. Church ain't got no baby finna die. Okay. You don't know how they got them. Don't worry about how they got them. We need to be concerned, but don't get too caught up because so many babies that we got a problem with will grow up and push your wheelchair. Okay, okay. Kylan, Kylan 3. Kylan 3 comes. He says, I want. The prayers of the church <clears throat> for forgiveness of sin. I'm having some problems in my life and need your prayers. I need prayer for my family and myself. Kylan, will you stand where you are? Will you just stand for us so we can recognize? Sister Cassandra Smith said, my sister, uh, pray for my sister, uh, my sister for God's healing over Claudesta Troy Taylor, who's having surgery tomorrow. Help my sister Claudesta and keep, uh, to keep the faith. Thank 
Man, thank you, Sister Cassandra. Would you stand where you are as well? Yolanda Wallace says, I want the prayers of the church for forgiveness of sin. I need prayer for myself, she says, and my, and my family. And I need prayer for God's guidance in my decision making. Sister, uh, Sister Mary Lomax says, I want the prayers of the church for forgiveness of sin. I'm having some problems in my life and need your prayers. I need prayer for my family, myself, for strength, and for patient understanding. Asking special prayer for my family, uh, the McMahons, for the passing of my niece on Tuesday night. Sister Monica Newsom says, I need prayer for my family and myself, for prayer for strength, and I want to thank the church for prayers on behalf of me. Thank you for your prayers. My results reveal uh, that my migraines are causing me to have many strokes, and I experience them daily. Some are more uh, unbearable than others, so please continue to pray uh, that they find the medicine quickly that regulate the cause. Pray for my strength, my family, while they support me through this, ex this especially uh, Lakia. Amen. Anita Wallace says, I need prayer for my family, myself, and for strength. Please pray for God's guidance in my decision making. And please pray that all goes well uh, for my dad on Monday, for me on Tuesday, as we will have uh, surgery. Let's keep them in our prayers. Brother Preston Wallace says, I'm having some problems in my life. I need your prayers, asking uh, for prayer of healing. Thank you, Preston. Brother Perry uh, Jr. and Zo Zoisha, uh, Zoisha says, uh, okay, pray that I give my wife the sacrifice that Jesus gave the church. I'm asking prayer that we can be uh, intentional about how we walk and talk together. God bless you. Thank you so much. Sister Aretha Thompson says, I need prayer for my family, myself, for patience, for understanding. I need prayer for God's guidance. Please pray for my mom, Sister Emma Johnson, who is in uh, a nursing facility in Memphis. Thank you, Sister uh, Thompson. Uh, Brother Terry Jones says, I need prayer for my family, myself, and for strength. Please pray for Joanne. Pray for Teresa Ewing. And thank you, Brother Justin Wallace. Sister Lisa Tanner says, I need prayer for my family and myself. Pray for my sister Ozella Ward having some migraine headaches. And she is in the serenity room uh, just kind of relaxing. Hopefully that migraine will pass. Sister Erica Norris comes and says, I need prayer for my family and myself. I need prayer for strength. I need prayer for patience and understanding. I need prayer for God's guidance. And this, the devil, she says, is trying to stop my movement. But I know uh, what's for me is for me. God bless you, Shane. Pamela Gordon comes. Uh, please continue to keep my mom, Jane Brinkley, in prayer. She is in hospice care. I tell you, your mom is a fighter. She's she been holding on a long time. I just got one question. One, won't God do it? Yeah. Brother James Smith. Brother James Smith says, I want to, uh, to thank the church for prayers on behalf of me. He said, my cousin pray that Buffy... Buford, okay, and, and son. Thank you so much, Brother Smith. Also, Sister Irene Grant, need prayer for my family, myself, and for strength. Says, I want, I would like uh, for you to pray for my son, Derek Rayford. Uh, okay, he died two times. Now he is, uh, come back and he is sick. He's very sick. So let's, let's, let, let's keep Derek in our prayers. So son, that's in Jacksonville. Jessica McNeese comes and says, I need prayer for my family, myself, and for strength. I need prayer for patience and understanding. I need prayer for God's guidance and decision making. Please pray for is that Renitha uh, Collins, who was in a car accident yesterday morning and is on a ventilator. Let's be praying for her. Amen. Uh, this uh, Miriam Cragen, yes, yeah, says, I want the prayers of the church for forgiveness of sin. I'm having some problems in my life. And need your prayers. I need prayer for my family and myself for strength, for patience, and understanding and God's guidance in my decision making. It says, please pray for Charles Cragen and family, Jones family, Thomas family, uh, Alexander family, my grandchildren and great grandchildren. Thank you, Sister Miriam Cragen. Those that are viewing us uh, through our uh, Facebook page, Joanne Sites, good morning, church family. Need prayer for forgiveness of sin. Pray for me and my family. Says Sister Brenda Reddick, please pray for my son Eric the third regarding his 
follow-up uh, appointment on Tuesday. Pray that all goes well and he'll be released to return back to work. Carla Cheeks, please continue to keep my husband Roland and my cousin uh, Pam Young and your in your prayers for good health and strength. Brother Bobby Malone, good morning, special prayer for my mom. Sandra Williams asking the church for continued prayers for my Aunt Christian Faulkner uh, and the Faulkner family as she lay her son to rest on tomorrow. Sister Priscilla Clark, please pray for me. I'm, I'm not feeling my best. Uh, Kelsey Joanne Lewis asking for prayer to be stronger in the Lord and pray that I uh, study God's um, God's work more than I do, word more than I do. Rosemary Bird, please pray for my aunt Robbie Chambers. The doctor has said it will not be long, but she is in good. But she is good either way because she is a child of God. Thanks, Justin, for the message. Sister Brenda Moore asking for prayers for my son Demarcus. He had a stroke and not able to walk. Praying that. Uh, he regained use of his left side. To one of French, pray for my family. My uncle is in poor health. Ever Janelle Bell, thank you, church, for all your prayers. Keep praying for me. I read somewhere the prayers of the righteous avail it much. I don't know where you are, but I see you uh, in here. But there, when I say I don't know where you are in your walk and what's going on inside of your mind, you may have needed to really stand. You may have needed to write something down. But God can meet you right where you are. He knows the very inner sanctions of your mind. Won't you ask him, maybe a prayer for a family. Now, maybe you need prayer for traveling grace. Some have traveled a great distance to be in this place. You may just need prayer for family members, co-work. I don't know what it is. But one thing I do know, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Oh, Lord, I pray. As we prepare our hearts and our minds to pray, all we're trying to do. Oh, Lord, I pray. We're climbing. There's a there's a purpose. What are we trying to do in our climbing? Shall we pray? Our God and our Father, we bow our heads in humble submission to the one who spoke to nothing. Something came to be. The one who touched us this morning with the finger of his love. We got up with the right conception of our minds and the right movement of our limbs. To the one that said, I am that I am. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. We stand, Father, thanking you for this another day. Thank you for health and strength. Please, Father, forgive us of our sins. You heard all of those who wrote down on their sheet what they desire from you. If it be your divine will, Father, give them right now in the name of Jesus the very desires of their hearts. Bless our families today. The life we're living down here, Father, you know all about it. It's your world. We're just living in it. And you've given us the Holy Spirit to deal with anything that comes our way. Help us to yield to it as we deal with life's problems. Be with our families. Help us to be strong. Help us to love and truly learn how to forgive. Give us the strength we need to follow through on the things we know through your word. And help us to be patient, not only with ourselves, but with others. And in our patience, be understanding of what's happening around us to us and to others. Guide us, Father. We are willing to let you lead us, and we know that if we allow you to be our leader, then safely we'll make our destination. We thank you, Father. There are those who are sick, 
whose body is requiring surgery. You are the doctor that has never lost a patient. We know that you're able because your word tells us that you spit on the ground one day and made a, a blind man see. You walked to a grave man that had been dead and you, you, you said, Lazarus, come forth. We know you got the power. But you've given doctors down here gifts. We ask that you let them use it. Father, when they came, you step in. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory and all the praise. Bless all of the marriages. Help us to gravitate toward you, Father. And love our spouses as you love the church. You loved us so much. You gave your only son. We thank you for giving your son, God. And we thank you, Jesus, for laying down your life. We thank you. We praise you. We ask this prayer and many others. In the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Climbing Jacob, Jacob, oh, all the climbing, climbing Jacob, yeah. time already and who does not have the spirit right now to give to God but God has already done for us what time is it West Oak Grove that's what time it is and we are thankful to God for that the Bible says it is more blessed to give than it is to receive for God loves a cheerful giver it's on the first day of the week that the disciples came together, and when they came together, they laid aside their money. They put it aside for the needs of those in the church. And there are great needs for not only members in the church, but responsibilities of the church. And we are so grateful that God has blessed all of us, or most of us, with jobs and wherewithal that we can give back to him what he has already given to us. As a matter of fact, what we are giving back to him already belongs to him. He has just made us stewards of what belongs to him. And God always give us back more than we give him. He said, give and it good measures. Shaking together. Shall men do what? Give into your bosom. God loves happy givers. Shall we pray? God, we thank you right now for the gift of giving. We thank you for the grace of giving. For you are the ultimate picture of what giving and sacrifice looks like. You gave your only son. Your son loved you so much that he was willing to lay his life down. So that we could have access to you. Thank you Jesus. Thank you for good health. Thank you for good strength. Thank you for giving our bodies what we need to work 8, 10, 12 hours a day. Six and seven days a week. It's by your power. Lord, please don't let us have a heart that thinks that we did it so that you don't put holes in our pockets. God, thank you for being just God and being so patient with us and giving us another chance. We ask this prayer and many others in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody ought to hold. To his hand, hold on to my God's unchanging love. Everybody ought to hold, hold to his love. Hold on to God's unchanging Well, you ought to be in your own song.
moments after the communion we're going to have a, a, a announcements done quickly and then we'll do a few things we don't want you to leave we want you to experience what we're planning to do uh, in just a few moments after communion uh, and we, we want you to hold your uh, uh, brothers to bring an extra basket uh, back we're going to do something here we want to honor brother and sister Hardaway today. Um, church, um, it's a lot of history that many of the younger members don't know about. Brother Hardaway and sister Hardaway have sacrificed over the years for the churches of Christ, not only in Arkansas, but all over our, our brotherhood. Brother Smith told me about Brother Hardaway before I ever met Brother Hardaway told me about his experience, and one of the first anniversaries we had, Brother Smith and Sister Smith uh, brought ideas back from the old Dixie Church. And, and, and when I met Brother Hardaway, it was like we had not, not just yet, fellas, not, not just yet, not just yet. Let's come back in just a moment. Uh, we're going to do the communion, and then we're going to come back and do that and make a presentation. That's what we're going to do, okay? Thank you. But I want you to have that in your spirit because uh, I, want you to, I don't want you to just not do anything. We want to show Brother Hardaway. Now, Westo Grove, you showed brother, Sister Hardaway a lot of love uh, when she came. And I'm just thanking God. God every time they come, see, like sometimes they, something happens, but they keep on coming. And that time she came, she stayed down here in the hospital for a good while. But Westo Grove, we took care of her and him. But, but Brother Hardaway... Has, has been there for me in tight spots. And, and, and we want to show him how much we appreciate him. Uh, 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 Brother Smith, Brother Kim, others at the time but, uh, that was with us, but Brother Kim and Brother Smith uh, in the beginning were, were there and listened to the wisdom of Brother Hardaway and it blessed your preacher. And, and, and down through the years, we have never stopped communicating. When I needed his help, when I needed his advice, uh, when Sister Wallace needed Sister Hardaway, she was just a jewel for us. And we want to take this moment, uh, Brother Hardaway, uh, to tell you and Sister Hardaway, we love you. But I'm going to have Brother Kim to share his thoughts because he took a lot of the cues that you said didn't even know he was listening and shared them. And so we wanted him to be a part of the presentation. At this moment, if you don't mind, if you mind, Brother Kim is going to come as we partake of the Lord's Supper. And then the announcements, and then we'll do something, and then we'll come back with the presentation. Thank you for the blood. The blood. Oh, thank you for the blood. Oh, we thank you for the blood, Lord. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Thank you, thank you for the blood. Amen. This is a special time. What makes it so special, we come together as brothers and sisters in Christ, friends and relatives to absorb, observe the Lord's communion. Uh, we should think about Jesus just not at this particular time, but each and every day that the Lord allow you to get up. You should thank God. But it's special because we come together to remember Jesus. The bread that we will be partaking of it's a symbolic of Jesus' body and the fruit of the vine that we will be uh, partaking of is a symbolic of his blood. 
uh, to set the tone, uh, Luke chapter 22 and the verses 19 and 20. And it states, and he took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it unto them, saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And that's what we're doing as of now. Likewise, also the cup at the supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed it for you. All right, let us give thanks. The righteous Father, we're so thankful and grateful. We're thankful for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have been made to hear. We're thankful for this particular time as we remember Jesus just not only this day, not only just this first day of the week, but each and every day. We are thankful for this bread that represents his body, this fruit of the vine that represents his blood. We ask that you bless our communion at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's all commune. Sorrow, Lord, to him a 
Brother Wallace, a hand for that wonderful message on this morning. Brother Justin Wallace, we had no doubt. We never have doubt when it comes to Justin. It's always good to have him home with us because we know that he's going to give us something either in word or in song. Justin is going to bless us whenever he's here. Amen. Amen. And as we're preparing to go down from this place on this morning, we have just a couple of announcements. The first one is it says, join us for Weekend Breakfast Buffet. This is for all of the brothers that's going to take place at the Golden Corral. There on, um, it's going to be on next Saturday, the 24th. Amen? 25th. Okay. 25th. Amen. So we're asking all the brothers to, to uh, make sure you're making plans to be a part of that. Amen? Heritage Sunday, February 26th. That's next Sunday, right? Amen. So let's come geared up. Let's do like we did on last night. Everybody was right in order last night, <laughs> right on point last night. So let's be on point next Sunday in our um, African attire on next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Community Easter egg hunt is going to take place on April the 8th. On April the 8th. The community Easter egg hunt. There's going to be more details coming um, about that, but we know our Easter egg hunt is always a, a, a fun time for the kids and for the adults as well, right? Amen, amen. And then we're going to have West Oak Grove Family Outing. They are in Hot Springs, Arkansas. That's, yeah, that's going to take place on June the 9th through 10th. We're doing, uh, it says, what are we doing? Magic Spring. The hotel is the Arlington Resort Hotel and Spa. So that's going to take place in the month of June. So I'm, I'm sure there's going to be more information coming pertaining to that as well. Another new one, Young Men Empowerment Conference for males 13 through 18. All males 13 through 18. That's going to take place on June the 24th. June the 24th is going to begin at 9 a.m. Uh, the summit is going to start at 10 a.m. Lunch will be served afterwards. Now, this is for all of our uh, young guys ages 13 through 18. But we're asking all of the brothers of West Oak Grove to be here for that. Because they're going to need to see us. They're going to need to see us old brothers, us middle-aged brothers, to be a part of what they're doing. Amen. Because we are the leaders, aren't we? Yes. So please, brothers, let's make sure we're here for that so that we can uh, support all of these young guys uh, on that uh, Saturday morning. Also, the National Celebrated Seniors is coming up um, really soon here. And Siebert and Kia are spearheading this. Well, they're going to be the ones that our contact people here at the church for that. It's going to take place April the 21st through the 23rd. And... They want to meet with all of the ones, all of the senior saints that are planning or need information pertaining to that to remain in the, in the sanctuary immediately follow the service. And all of those who are interested in being bridge gappers ask that you remain as well immediately following service on this morning. Amen? Amen. It says, please wish my brother, I'm sorry, please wish my husband a happy 40th birthday. That's Otis Wallace. <laughs> it's going to actually take place on Friday, so Otis will finally be over the hill. 
Yeah. We want to say in advance, happy birthday to Brother Otis Wallace. And also, Shante, Shante's daughter, Raven, had a birthday one day this past week. Yesterday. Amen. Happy birthday to Raven. And happy birthday to all of those that are celebrating birthdays in the month of uh, February. Amen. And also, I have one other announcement. Tickets will go on sale starting next Sunday for next year's Sweetheart Gala. I only said that they won't go on sale next Sunday. I, they might. Brother Wallace has, has already said, we had such a wonderful time last night. I mean, it, it was really, really good. So for all of those that did miss, you did miss a treat. I mean, we're not just saying that. But as I always say, you can never do less than you've done before. So next year, it's going to be even higher. But tickets will be going on sale really, really soon. Amen. Amen. Those are all of the announcements that I have. Amen. Okay, it's so much going on. I, 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 listen, it, it's just 1225. I, I know, I know, I know, I know that your sugar diabetes kind of start ticking around by 1230, but give us a few more. And we'll be like, there's some stuff we're missing here. Uh, uh, visitors, I have one visitor called AJ and LaShawn Sinclair from Fair, 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 Fairburn, Georgia. Is that right? Oh, Lord. That's right. She's always all right, though. Amen. AJ and LaShawn. How y'all doing? Y'all stand so we can recognize you all. We're going to make y'all stand today. Amen. These are just the members. Thank you guys for being with us. Appreciate y'all so very much. Amen. Are there any other visitors that we don't have cards on want to be recognized? It's good to have you here this morning. Anybody? They members of the body of Christ. Yeah. Good, 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 good to see the Horton family back there tonight, to this, this evening. Good to see uh, 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 Paris here today. Paris Walker. Paris, let him, let him see you. There you go. He's back home. Amen. He's back. Amen. Looking like a little man now with your beard going on. Right? But anyway, good to see Sister Horton them from Chicago and her mom. Uh, good to see y'all. Anyone else? How about in the center? In the center, visiting with us today. But it's certainly not a member of the body of Christ, Church of Christ. And if you are, I want to be recognized. All right, to my left, to my left, to my left, to my left. All right, all right. Nobody? All right, all right. Let's just give our visitors already from Georgia, <laughs> Chicago, a very big hand. Just before Brother Kim come to you ready to pass that, that other extra gift to Brother Hardaway, there is something else I need to do. Our um, our benevolent ministry is is A1 and says we have some congratulations that needs to be done. Uh, Sister Stephanie is doing a great job. She says, Congratulations to Team One. Always first for collecting the most canned goods and making a can instruction with a total of 116 cans. Amen. All right, that's team one. Team two, making it happen, collected and made a can instruction with a total of 62 cans. Let's give team two a great big hand. So the benevolent ministry, that ain't enough, but benevolent ministry uh, would like to take all who participated and donated toward the construction food drive. They want to thank all of you. We collected a total of 178 canned goods. That, that, that's good. That's wonderful. But we got to do better. Amen. We ought to have about four or 500 cans of goods, okay? And so we need more participation because you don't ever know when you might need. We get calls all through the week and we want to be able to have it already here at the building and we can just supply it. We got, we got, we're getting it in. We just need you to do it. We're going to keep on doing it. You know how those commercials, sometimes you just get tired of them. Some of them, you can almost recite them from memory. We're going to keep on doing it until you get it here too as well. Okay, that we need 
because when we feed those that are hungry, we don't have to worry about the Lord saying, I was hungry and you did not feed me. Okay? We were naked and you did not clothe. Westo Grove, we do an awesome job. So let's strive even to do better. Now, I'm going to move out of this and let Brother Kim come at this time. Go ahead and pass the basket, and we're going to ask Brother Adam. He's going to come and sing a special song for Sister Holloway. Right. Sister Holloway, I'm going to do what you always ask me to do. I need Jesus on my I need 
And where my God leads me, Sister Holloway, it, it was our intention for you and Sister Holloway to be here today. We were trying to get you here the first Sunday, the first Sunday in January. But we was we were thankful and grateful to have y'all here on t on today. Brother and Sister Holloway has been a blessing to this church since the beginning. We was located at 621. West Oak Grove that is located over in the Hope. At this present time, those that was a part of the church at 621 West Oak Grove, would you stand at this time? Amen. You might be seated. That was during that time. Prior to that, we started out with just 12 people. Before that, we was the Hill Street Church of Christ. And we started out at 25 people, but we all came from Central Avenue. And the work didn't last less than about two years. And so back in 89, my grandfather got with Brother Wallace and asked him to come back and take this work. And I remember back during that time, I visited Brother and Sister Wallace, and boy, bro, uh, Sister Wanda could make some homemade biscuits. <laughs> Chicken and gravy, Lord have mercy. And during that time, they had a big old German shepherd. I think DJ was a baby at that time. And look at him now. Lord have mercy. God is good. But we just want you to know that we, we appreciate you for blessing us over the many of years. So we do have something special for you and brothers, for you and, and Sister Holloway. And Calvin going to bring that now. And I do have another appreciation for you, Brother Holloway, Sister Holloway. Me personally, my wife, I guess I've been doing this for about the last five or six years. But you already know what it is. You already know what it is. I, I make it my business each and every year. When I know that you're coming here, it's something that I do. But just not only for Brother and Sister Holloway, every minister that comes here, at this church, I try to do something extra. I don't care what it is, I try to do something extra. If I have something that they can use, church is brand new. I don't give nothing away used. It's brand new. It's things that I could have kept 
but I chose to be an extra blessing. So again, we just, we just, we thank you. We're, we're first church, we're first class church here. Again, we thank Kia and Sebra and the whole youth, I mean, uh, young adult, you just done an awesome job. Amen. Church, that was some extra costs in there now. <laughs> but that's good. We want y'all to know that in advance, so if, if there's a price hike, Please don't grow up like a prune. I deal with the finances. I, I know. They done an awesome job. An awesome job. We thank you. Thank you, everyone. At this time, at this time, it would, it would, it would be remiss of us, and it certainly would be protocol, not to have Brother Hardaway to come and say something to us, and then we'll be going down uh, from, from this place. At this time, Brother Hardaway. You want to come up or you want to take the mic? I want to express my sincere appreciation to all of you all, to uh, Sister Lawanda, her husband Terry, and I didn't know you all were going to do this, so I've got to let you know what I plan to say. I told Terry last night when he asked me about speaking today, I told him uh, I would prefer to say something about his wife, uh, if he didn't mind, because uh, I didn't want to stand long. But I got to tell you this, because this is, this is the truth has ever been told. This past week, my wife and I were sitting down making preparations for death and dying because we know that we got to leave here. Amen. We've been married for 60 years. And, and so we were sitting down and uh, I asked her, I said, who do you want to do your eulogy? Do you want uh, our preacher? She said, no, I don't have anything against our preacher. She said, but I want Brother Wallace to do my eulogy. <laughs> I said, you know, you got to find somebody else because Brother Wallace is going to do mine. <laughs> she, said, <laughs> she, said, she said, no, you find somebody else. I said, well... I say, I wanted Brother Waters to do mine, and I wanted Alvin to sing that song. Uh, what's the name of that song? I Need Jesus. And uh, so we hadn't worked it all out yet. But uh, we, we're still debating on who's going to do what. So uh, Sister Hardaway wanted Brother Terry Wallace, and I wanted Brother Terry Wallace. She said, well, you know more preachers than I do. You pick somebody else. <laughs> And so th that's the conversation we had prior to coming here. We didn't know that you all was planning on doing this. And uh, I had told uh, Brother Terry last night after I discovered that his wife had a birthday on yesterday. And uh, what, what I wanted to do, I don't guess I can do now uh, since you all have already passed the basket for me. So uh, I, I was going to ask him if I could... Uh, uh, give a donation and pass the basket for the first lady because uh, this church, and I say this for those of you who are late bloomers for this church, uh, this church is a family church. And uh, I have witnessed over the years uh, the good deeds that have been done. And I've often said, Genesis chapter 12, uh, the Bible said the Lord will bless those who bless the preacher. And I've emphasized that a number of times here. Uh, when you bless the man of God, God bless you. And I don't know what you took up, but I always believe when I held a gospel meeting, I would always give the tithe back to the preacher so I could continue to be blessed. And I don't care if you didn't take up for $10. I want to give the tithe, not to the preacher, but I'd like to give the tithe to his wife. So, so I wonder. 
if you don't mind doing that. And, and, and I also want to add to that my gift, uh, because Lawanda has been a true trooper, and she's been like a daughter to Ernie and I, even though we have two daughters, but she's also been like a daughter to us. And we want you to know that we love you, we appreciate you, and I thank you. DJ, is that your son over there on that mic? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You boy, I tell you, they're growing up in here, Terry. <laughs> and uh, Alvin, thank you so much for those kind words and for that lovely song. And Sikum, I heard that uh, you did your first sermon. Uh, if you didn't do it, I hear you getting ready to do it. And I just want to give you praise for the sacrifice that you're making and the leap that you're beginning to take. Thank you so very much, Brother Terry, for all that you have done, all that you do throughout this brotherhood, and all that you've done for us. God bless you. Thank you so much. If you all... But I don't want to forget my dear friend, Kim, because as long as I've been coming here, I've never been here when Kim knew that I was coming and he didn't have a gift for me. Amen. Thank you so very much, my brother. Amen. Would you all, would you, would you all do something special for me? Uh, because a lot of things could not happen without these guys. Brother Stanley, will you stand where you are? Brother Stanley Robinson. Brother Smith, will you stand where you are? Brother Kim, would you kind of just ease around this way? Uh, let, let, let's celebrate these guys because these are the guys that helped Brother Wallace in, 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 in the spiritual decisions uh, 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 down through the years. And if you, if you notice, these guys are not as young as they used to be. Uh, and we got a younger crop of young men. Stephen, will you stand? DJ, will you stand? Hakeem, will you stand? Two right here. Right here. Y'all guys stand right there. Stand right there. Mari um, Monterio. These are young men. You're standing on the wall right there. Uh, 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 wait, 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 wait. You guys stand up right here. These are our future. Yes, but these guys right here, uh, 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 stand up, young man. These, 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 these guys right here in a few more years will take our place. Yes, and then that means these guys, okay, Zantarion, you stand up. Uh, uh, this little fella, you right here, stand up. These are our future. And if we don't start planting it, It'll never happen. And so I want to do something different. I don't want this church to die because it's centered around the preacher. I want this church to live because it's going to be centered around ministry. And there's a difference between ministry and the minister. There are churches in our brotherhood right now when the preacher died, the church died. Because it was centered around them. And that's why I'm working hard to build these young men. And I want to thank you. You guys can see, except Brother Stanley, y'all stay. I want to thank you guys, Brother Kim, Brother Smith, Brother Robinson, uh, for allowing me to lead the church, but with you guys giving me uh, wise a a advice. And I don't want to leave Alvin out. Alvin is influential in so many ways. Uh, 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 and I thank God for his gift. There's so many. Now, there are others that have the gift, but these are guys that I hear from just about every other day. And so I thank God for that. There's some powerful sisters in here, brothers. Yes, Lord. And what I want to do uh, in this new era is, is empower our sisters to know that there's a lot of work you can do, but the pulpit don't belong to you. Okay. <laughs> I love you, sisters. But, 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 and, so, and I want to thank you, Brother Stanley, for the work you do behind the scenes. Brother Smith, the work you do behind the scenes, and Brother Kim. Come on, let's be standing now. I'm hungry as I can be. Come on, and stand up. We, we, we thank God for you. Thank God for you. Let's just, let's just thank God for it. Hadn't it been a wonderful day? Oh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful day. All of, all of the brothers and sisters, it's just good to see. It's good to see all of you. See, when you got something that's going to. Take us out of here. The celebrated seniors. Ce celebrated seniors meeting. Let's not forget that because they are really looking for us in Chicago. Uh, there, They've already been calling and texting. So we want to make sure that we get a good number to go with us and from other places. I'm sorry, but it's good to have my oldest brother in the audience today, yeah. Brother Lucius Wallace. Amen. Thank you, Lucius. Lord, hold my hand.
Father, Lord, here we are again, thanking you for allowing us to be able to assemble here on this morning. Lord, we pray that the things that were done and said are most pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless us. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless Justin as he continues.